In this video, I will introduce Nash's general formulation of game theory, his key concept called the Nash equilibrium, and the theorem that comes along called Nash theorem. The general formulation of game theory by Nash consists of a finite set of players. Each player has a set of action. Crucially, any player's action affects other players' gains and losses. More precisely, each player measures its well-being through a utility function that he wants to maximize, and any player's utility is a function that depends on all players' actions. The n tuple of these utility functions then defines the game. Note that we retrieve on Norman's two-player zero-sum game theory that we discussed in a previous video by assuming n equals 2 and the fact that uh, you have this zero-sum so we can write this as u1 plus u2 taken at the same argument, so for instance a1, a2. This should always equal to zero for all inputs, that is for all actions a1, a2. But most of von Neumann's analysis, and that includes the minimax theorem, cannot be generalized to this setting. So how can rational players be expected to be playing Nash's general formulation of game theory? It turns out that there is one key consequence of von Neumann's minimax theorem that can be generalized to this more general setting. Namely, previously we said that von Neumann proved the existence of a pair of minimax strategies such that a player's minimax strategy is the best strategy in response to the other player's minimax strategy. As a result, once both players play minimax strategies, no one has incentives to play anything else. Both players playing minimax strategies is a sort of equilibrium of the game. Nash's brilliant idea was to generalize this concept to his formulation of game theory. He called Nash equilibrium an assignment of equilibrium strategies to each player such that playing the equilibrium strategy is for any player a best response to other players playing their equilibrium strategies. More formally, a Nash equilibrium is a strategy profile threaded S star, uh, which consists of S1 star and S2 star and so on until Sn star for each player, I for I going from 1 to N, such that for any player I, the strategy Si star is a maximizer of the function that maps his strategy Si to the utility where all other players play as according to S star, but player I can choose any strategy Si that he wants. So in other words, once we fixed the strategies except Si to the strategy profile S star, the Nash equilibrium, then one of player I's best strategy is Si star. As exemplified by the rock, paper, scissors game, there is not always a Nash equilibrium with deterministic or so-called pure strategies. However, again following von Neumann's footsteps, Nash turned to randomized or so-called mixed strategies. This led him to the Nash theorem. Any finite game has a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. By finite here we mean that the set of players is finite and as well that the set of actions available for each player is finite too. And to be a bit more formal, by mixed strategy what we mean here is a probability distribution over actions which can be regarded as a vector of the simplex of r to the power ai if we are talking about player i's mixed strategies. The Nash theorem is important because it suggests that all games can be analyzed using the Nash equilibrium concept. However, this actually has a limit as well. First, it does not guarantee the uniqueness of the Nash equilibrium. In fact, as opposed to the setting to which the minimax theorem applies, some non-zero-sum games turn out to have several very distinct equilibria, some of which are much more preferable for some players, if not for all players. And so, because we may have several distinct Nash equilibria, there's a sort of selection problem. In other words, Nash's game theory cannot allow us to predict which Nash equilibrium will be played. Second, Nash equilibria are not guaranteed to be stable or computable in certain senses of these words. More precisely, evolutionary game theory rather adopts the concepts of evolutionary stable strategies, which only some of the Nash equilibria are. 
while algorithmic game theory suggests that Nash equilibria cannot be computed in polynomial time in the most general kind of setting. Although this claim, while a lot of computer scientists actually believed in it, uh, this claim has not been proved yet and it's still an open question. Nevertheless, the Nash theorem has had a major impact, especially in economics and biology, where the competition between companies or between species is adequately modeled by Nash's game theory and insights can be drawn from Nash equilibria. So let me now briefly sketch the proof of the Nash theorem. Most importantly, let us notice that, as John von Neumann put it, it is just a fixed point theorem. To understand why so, note that there is a best reply correspondence that maps the strategy profile of all players, but player i, let's call this vector s minus i, to the set of maximizers of ui. By taking the n-tuple of best reply correspondences, we then obtain a best reply correspondence of strategy profiles that maps a strategy profile to best reply strategies to the strategy profile. A Nash equilibrium can then be defined as a fixed point of this best reply correspondence, that is, a strategy profile that is a best reply to itself. In, indeed, once this strategy profile gets played, no player has incentives to deviate from this strategy profile. This strategy profile is thus an equilibrium, or as we now call it, a Nash equilibrium. However, it turns out that the best reply correspondence we have defined here is very well behaved. More specifically, when the game is finite, the set S of possibly mixed strategy profiles is a compact and convex subset of a finite dimensional vector space. Moreover, the graph of the best reply correspondence is closed and any section uh, best reply of S for any strategy profile S in S is non-empty and convex. All these properties are not so hard to derive from the definition of the best reply correspondence. Anyways, the bottom line is that we can now apply Kakutani's fixed point theorem, which allows us to conclude that BR has a fixed point, i.e. there is a Nash equilibrium. QED.